welcome back to another week of Females Unfiltered Show. Hi, everyone over there in Instagram land. Um, guys, we've got another new face with us. We're so excited to welcome Alyssa as one of our co-hosts this season. Welcome, girl. Thank you. Tell everyone a little, little smidge about what are you, Alyssa? Who do you do? What, what's going on? What's up in your world? Well, I just moved to L.A. from New York. Okay, okay. Um, which has been such a trek. Mm -hmm. um, but I am the co-founder of an online magazine called Fembot. Yep. Um, and I'm also a digital strategist. So I do so many different things on so many different levels, um, but my real, my thing that like gets my heart beating is my online feminist magazine. Yeah, yeah. So. And guys, I know we always talk about how we try to steer clear of politics on the show, but Alyssa convinced me so once a month she's going to be one of our revolving segments and it's going to be really coming from her Fembot magazine. And so we will get a little into politics this season once a month. So we'll try to keep it there for you, but for all of those of you who love politics like I do, we will bring you a little dose of that this season. Um, and cheers to Spa Girl. I think we forgot to shout you out last week. Karen, I apologize, but we got our Spa Girls cocktail as usual, and that, that's some good shit. So I was telling Alyssa we love to start off with our favorite thing of the week. It can be anything at all you want it to be. So did you have something favorite that happened to you this week? Favorite thing that happened to me this week? Um, definitely being on the show has been a big favorite. I landed like a dream client of mine this week, so that's been like such a such an honor. Um, and I feel like things are going good in my life. I've been manifesting. Yes. I've, been, <laughs> I've been really hoping for things to go well. Love so, that. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. 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 It's all good stuff. So, guys, I have a weird but amazing favorite thing too this week. Um, so there is something called Equality Fashion Week, and it happens in L.A. I believe this is the second time it's happening this year. It's going to be in October. It's uh, put on by an individual named Nick Casey, and it's definitely a fashion week that's really geared towards bringing awareness to our LGBTQ community and family. Um, and funny enough, I'm going to be walking in the fashion week for oh a designer. God. Vanity Dolls, and we're so excited. Oh and Nick God. Casey's also going to come on in October to talk about fashion week and... Maybe if we can get Cha-Cha here from Vanity Dolls, we can get Cha-Cha on briefly. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> but, you know, two new things, guys, two new things. It, it's all exciting stuff. Um, so what did you find is going on in this world that you want to talk about? So I actually found out yes. that remakes of movies okay. are total flops. I kind of agree with that. Like all movies that are remade, or what? So, do you so the majority of movies that are remakes yeah. usually flop, and this is based on statistics okay. combined with IMBD and Metacritic. Okay, okay. So they combine the statistics of how well the movie is scored on yeah. those sites yeah. versus how they profit. Okay. And they've been total flops. They don't they don't profit as much as their original. Right. Which I feel like is kind of a no brainer. I feel like most of the time it is a no-brainer because people usually just love that original so much they probably have some kind of emotional connection to it. And then when that reboot comes around, unless you're experiencing it maybe with like your kid or the child important to you, you're like, fuck, this is not the joyous warmth that it gave me when I was a child. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the number one example they had was Dumbo. And oh, like, yeah. I couldn't even get through half of Dumbo. <laughs> well, you know what? Here's the thing. Dumbo, I just remember being so sad I, just, I didn't even want to watch the remake. I was yeah. like, I cannot put myself through that again. What? Okay, so did you have a remake that you liked? Maybe not as much as the first, but you, you still really enjoyed it. You know what I really enjoyed, and I think you might agree with me, okay. is Mad Max. Oh, mm -hmm. Mad Max was great. Yeah. See, I loved, and here's the thing. Growing up, I was the Disney kid. Like, I'm pretty sure most of us were Disney kids growing up. But now I'm definitely like, well, Disney better get their shit straight. But I did really like the remake of Beauty and the Beast. Oh. I did not hate it at all. I love yeah. that they threw like a little, you know, LGBTQ romantic tiny storyline in there. Mm -hmm. So I didn't hate it at all. Did you see the remake of The Lion I, King? I did. And uh, I didn't, but I wanted to. Maybe I it's didn't, just like a home movie though. Maybe I should just, well, okay, how was it for you? Tell me. Personally, yep. and like I'm not going to spoil it. Okay. I just personally did not like it. Yeah. And the reason why I didn't like it is because it wasn't, I was kind of expecting a little bit of creativity and a uniqueness right. and a difference, but I think that the only difference was is that it was live action. This is, this is the constant theme that I heard from every yeah. critic. The only thing that was different is it was live action, but it's pretty much 
exactly the same. Yeah. And some, someone even said it just looked weird having these live action animals that really couldn't express the emotion properly that you got with the cartoon. <laughs> so you yeah. weren't really taken on that emotional journey. Guys, quit, quit doing the remakes. Yeah. Just knock it off. Um, okay, here's what I found going on in the world that I thought was like kind of a fun little interesting tidbit. So I don't know how you feel about RBG, but I love me some RBG, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. Oh, her. RBG. Well, apparently Jennifer Lopez also loves RBG, and she became obsessed with her after the documentary came out. And she had the opportunity to sit down with her in her chambers mm -hmm. uh, with hubby. And and I guess RBG had a really successful happy marriage. Her husband passed away, and she said, "You know what is the secret to your happy marriage? Because we all know JLo's getting hitched." And RBG said, I'll tell you what my mother-in-law told me on my wedding day, which was, it's good to be a little deaf sometimes. And I was like, RBG said that? The RBG we know and love who stands for everything said that? Yeah. But I get what she was saying. You got to pick and choose your battles is kind of also how you can interpret that, right? You can't pick mm -hmm. a fight over every small fucking thing because it will tear you apart. Yeah. Only the things that really matter. But I was a little bit like, I cannot believe she told women to play like they didn't hear sometimes. I, what did you I think about that? I interpret it as like a forgive and forget. Yeah. yeah I yeah, think yeah, I yeah. interpreted it a little bit like that. But when I, when I read it, I was just like... Uh, it depends how deaf you really need to be. Right, and it depends on what we need to be deaf about. Because if you're, exactly, if you're too deaf about something. Right, like if you were caught in the bushes with like your best friend, mm -hmm. there will be no deafness. And I don't yeah. think RBG would be deaf about that either. But I get no. what she's saying. And that's actually coming from like a really strong place because she is like this fierce, powerful woman that probably has a lot to say. Absolutely. So for her to be like, I'm going to be deaf and shut up and not notice that. I right. think that, that, that speaks volumes. I think so, too. And listen, men, it is also okay to be deaf sometimes, okay? We don't have to fight about the yeah. small shit. Let's just let it go. I'm a firm believer in makeup sex. That'll <laughs> fix everything. I don't want to get into the minutia. Let's just have sex and move forward. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, so that's what's going on in the world that we wanted to talk about. If you guys hang tight, we're going to get set up for Curry. Yay! He's going to help us figure something out. I don't know what it is, but it's always amazing. And we'll be right back, guys, in a jiff. Hang tight. Hi, guys. Thanks for sticking with us, Instagram. I appreciate that. Um, we're back with Curry. Yay! We haven't seen Curry since May. And he comes with us once a month, and he helps us figure something out. But Curry also is amazing and awesome. He is a talk show host. Yes. And he has a one-man show coming up. In th two and a half weeks. Tell, tell us about that. I'm doing a show called Seesawing Alone. It's basically um, <laughs> a show where I talk about wanting to be famous as a child and like all of my pop culture obsessions when I was a kid and sort of poking fun at it. So it's all like my life, like me reflecting on my life in like an e-true Hollywood story kind of format. I love that. Um, and telling about things I never accomplished, but I but loved them life. anyway. But still exactly. Life. So. And if this sounds fun, and I, I feel like it's going to be fucking a joy to watch, uh, where can we get tickets? Where is it going to be? It's all, it's going to be at the Lyric Hyperion, um, which is in Los Feliz, or is in Silver Lake, but it's sort of like Los Feliz, it's like right on the line. Mm -hmm. um, and you can get tickets on their website, you can get tickets from my Facebook or Instagram, all Let's Chat with Curry, it's all there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm excited, but so nervous. I'm so proud of you <laughs> Thank for you. doing a one show. Thank you, I don't know what I'm thinking. You're thinking of making moves yeah. is what you're thinking. Yes. Put big, yourself out there. You know, there. big moves. We love that. Thank you, I'm really, really <laughs> excited. <laughs> Um, what are we What are we figuring out this week? Okay, so as you all know, every day you wake up, there's a new streaming service. There is. So there's like a lot. Shit, yes. And so I figured, uh, as I was talking to my friend this week, I have made a new plan, okay. which is we are going to. Because I told her, I said, "Look, we're family mm -hmm. at this point, okay. yep. and I don't need to necessarily pay sixty dollars for eight things." And you don't necessarily need to pay sixty dollars for eight mm. things. So, like, why don't we divide and conquer? Love that. So the first step is really figuring out which ones you actually use. Okay. The two new ones that we know are coming out in November are the Disney Plus streaming service. I don't, I don't think I need that. But they have the High School Musical show, all the mm. National Geographic stuff, mm. all of Lifetime, which they have Dance Moms. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it depends on what <laughs> you love, and I love that you love it. And they also are going to have all the old Disney movies, which will be available nowhere but there. Yeah. And Fox stuff, because now they, you know, they own Fox. Yeah. So, like, the mo- if, even if nothing else, I think the movie library might be worth it. So, for Ooh. you, the Disney, what's it called, Disney Plus? It's Disney Plus. Is, a mu- is Disney it, Plus a it, must it's, for you? It's definitely a must. Okay. okay. I will, actually, I'm going to be honest, they're all a must for me. Yeah. Because I like to watch a little bit of everything. Right, right, right. Also, in November, they have the new Apple streaming service. Yeah, I kind of wonder wow. about that. Yeah. Yes. Now, they're launching with nine shows. They're going to put out three episodes of each, and then they're going to do everything weekly. So it's interesting yes. how when Netflix came out, we were like, we're going to binge everything. Right. And now, after the world has tried to sort of figure that out, they're like, actually, we're going to make stuff weekly. Well, I heard a great uh, discussion about this, yeah. I think, on public radio, perhaps. Okay. And they were saying, because streaming services are like, how do we keep eyes on us? There's yes. so many of us. Exactly. And they were saying, do it weekly like HBO. Yes. That's how you keep them on there. Because the thing is, is you watch all these shows on Netflix, and then like two days later, something else has come out, and we've all moved on. True. So they're like, how can we keep people? And also, the beauty of a streaming service is they put one episode out, two episodes out, three episodes out. So as people are joining along through the season, they can catch up. Yeah. yeah. So it's smart. I mean, it's... So tell me the ones that the four, like if you're only allowed to have four in your Okay. Life, you, Obviously you have to have. keep Netflix because yeah, they have the I largest agree. library of everything. Yeah. And their original content is like 90% excellent. Like I they agree. have some misses, but like usually even if it's not like great, it's still interesting and original mm-hmm. and yeah. they're not necessarily ripping stuff off. Right. Disney, whereas some people are going to struggle with it because it's a lot of reboots and remakes. So if you're yeah. not really into that, that we were could... We just talking about yeah. that before you came. Oh, okay. About the, the remake and how it's kind of shit these days. Yeah. I think it's hit or miss. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think a lot of times the way I look at it, like if you went to see Lion King, did you see the Lion you're King? Yeah, we were talking about it. How about did you it. feel about it? Well, I thought the animation was terrible. Yeah. Because they're, <laughs> yeah. they had no expression, this which is, was such yeah. a letdown because in the Jungle Book... They were so expressive, and yeah. it's the same exact director. So I'm like, how did how you? Did you miss but that? I, under, I, the way I go into it, and the way I can like deal with it and accept it, is it's a celebration of the old one. Okay. okay. Especially yeah. this one where they didn't add any new twist or okay. thing. It's like this is really just like people love the Lion King, they do. and they want to hear Akuna Matata. This is true. We do. So like, yeah. it was fun to go sit through it. Do I ever need to see it again? Absolutely not. Yeah. Like, do I want to see a lion talking? Yes. Yeah. Right. But will I sit through that again? Probably so, not. You'll watch the cartoon. Sidebar that has to relate to that. Yeah. I babysit a four-year-old kid. Okay. He is uh, Hispanic. Okay. And he asked me the other day, could you please the jalapeno song? And I said, I don't know if I know the jalapeno me song. Either. Can you sing it for me? And he goes, jalapeno. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That is Amazing. precious. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I got that for you. Yeah, like, yeah I, I do, got I do <laughs> that have I that know. one. Yeah. 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 Um, so, okay, so anyway, Disney so and Netflix. Disney, Netflix, I think are great. The Apple streaming service is on the fence for me because the original content they have, I'm going to definitely get okay. it because of the Jennifer Aniston show with Reese Witherspoon. Oh, yeah. But the rest oh, of their shows yeah. just seem like, meh. Mm. And they have a lot of, like, stuff that's coming out. But, like, when it does come out in a year or so yeah. and they really bulked it up, you can just get it then and right. catch up on all the things you've right. missed. So that one, if you're like going to skip one, I would say that's like a good one to maybe think okay. about. Yeah. Okay. Then Warner Brothers is also coming out with an what? app called HBO Max, which the only reason that anybody even cares is because they're HBO taking Max? Friends. Yeah, they're taking Friends and putting it on there. So it's pulling it off of Netflix. Huh. But oh. I'm not really a Friends yeah. head like that. So. Yeah, friends has not that. aged well. Yeah. So. Well, I don't know. I know this like eleven-year-old uh, girl, and she's obsessed with friends. Yeah. And I'm really? like, I'm like, well, that's interesting. Do you mean because it's like a little problematic? Yeah. It's a yeah, little yeah problematic. it definitely has some struggle, but I mean, that's unfortunately the beauty of it is that we've learned those lessons that those yeah. things. So you have to watch it sort of with that lens of like, you know. Yeah. We weren't quite as in the know then as right, we are now. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so. So those are your musts. Those are my musts. So I just Hulu think, was not on that list. Hulu was the other one I was going to say. Oh. Because I said the um, HBO one. But Hulu, again, their original content, even though it's not as much as Netflix, they really it's put good. out, I mean, Handmaid's Tale alone Handmaid's Tale. is worth the, like, yeah. six bucks. So what about Amazon Prime? Amazon Prime, to me, is like, eh, take it or leave it. Mrs. Really? Maisel is so good. See, I but love what about 
Mrs. Maisel. Yeah, yeah. but. What about you, Fleabag? Mrs. Yeah, but it's I'm gonna over. start Fleabag. I'm gonna start Fleabag. That's true. They did cancel. Yeah, so get the yeah. one month subscription of Amazon well, Prime for I have free. Amazon Prime. See, the, I think it's more important for the shipping stuff. I mean, I know. Okay. And listen, also, I like to buy my salmon at Whole Foods. I'm sorry, but I do. Yeah, I need to figure out how that works. And you can you can scan right. Is in it there a good you, deal? It is. You actually get you save like 10 percent on a lot of shit, and then yeah. they give you extra discounts on top of that. Oh. So yeah, it, it makes it like a little bit affordable. Okay. It really does, yeah. and I actually, I like it too. I have the same one. I like it too. Yeah, I yeah. think Amazon is trying to step up their game, because I don't know if anybody else watched the Meek Mill documentary. I that do. shit was amazing. They do have a lot of documentaries And you're like, on there. okay, I know our criminal justice system was fucked up, but now I really know it's fucked yeah. up. Yeah. So it was great. Okay. M my must, Netflix and HBO. Yeah. I gotta have those two. Yeah. But see, the thing is, well, the whole point is, at the end of it, how many do you have? So you have to start have to three. choose. Oh, three. so that's okay. Yeah, I have three. And then my uh, roommate got a friend to give him his uh, info so he can exactly. watch sports. Yeah. Which means we now have like access to a bunch of channels, and I was like, oh. I probably won't watch them. That's I another just, thing I don't on have the Disney one. Time to watch one. a lot of TV, but. Yeah, they're doing all the ESPN stuff. So if you're oh. a sports head, yeah, if you're sports it's all head. there. Okay. National well, Geographic, like they have a lot yeah. of like headings. All right. Surprise, Disney owns everything. Yeah. What's what are your musts? My musts are definitely Amazon Prime, okay. but that's for Sex in the City. Oh, okay, yeah, but girl. You, if you get HBO, same thing. Oh yeah, but HBO after Game of Thrones, I was like, I don't trust you guys anymore. <laughs> no, there's so much good shit out there yeah, right it's true. now. Listen, okay, well, what for a woman what? like you, years and years, okay, it is the not so distant future. And it's political, it's oh, societal, yeah. and shit is getting fucked and crazy. It's so really? hard. It's so good, though. Yeah. But you're like, this is where we're headed, yeah. and I'm terrified. Yeah. It's very within the realm of belief. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it was excellent. What about Euphoria on HBO? I haven't started it yet, but... Okay. Um, oh, my gosh. I'm not opposed that to it. That was so scary. Euphoria? I loved it, yeah. but, like, it was very dark. Yeah. I was like, my high school was, like cotton candy compared to this no mess. high schools are not cotton candy anymore. i know yeah no. the internet's really just ruined this yeah. and dead to me i did watch it oh yeah it is excellent yeah dead. i hope really? everyone has a friend like that yeah just without the murder stuff yeah mm -hmm. that part's a sort of like yeah i do love netflix yeah netflix, yeah, netflix is like is, really netflix is the king. and listen i really feel like a lot of netflix's um holiday movies mm. are comparable to lifetime cheesy movies yeah. If not better. Yeah, I will because watch, they're more politically I will watch, correct. I'll watch a cheesy Netflix holiday movie at least three a holiday season. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. But Don't get me started on Christmas. Okay. That's a deep yeah. dive. Okay. But did you hear that they're rebooting or they're renewing Grace and Frankie on Netflix? Yeah, but then it's oh, they over. Are. And then it's over. Oh. But so that's the longest run. running yeah. Netflix season. Really? Mm hmm. Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. Well. That's, there we have it, guys. There's a lot of content in this world. So share with your friends. That's yeah. the overall message. Okay, so you and so you and friend, you're splitting it in half, splitting four and half. four, exactly. cutting the bills in half. Yes. Sharing passwords. Yeah. Because it's love like, that. yeah, why not? We live in. Everyone yeah. shares a password. Yeah. So I'll share my Amazon Prime with you. Okay, perfect. Oh, well, you do your third. Disney with me. Okay. There we go. There then we, go. we get you a little bit of HBO. HBO with me. And then give me Hulu. Exactly. Okay. Wow. Perfect. We're, we're good. We got it all squared away. Oh, wow. Teamwork. Um, okay, Curry, where can people find, follow, and support you? All my stuff is at, at Curry Terrell, C-U-R-R-I-E-T-E-R-R-E-L-L. -L. Guys, one man show. I'm going to be there. September 30th. I got to buy tickets. Soon. I got to buy tickets. I got to buy, I gotta buy yes, tickets. Yes, please. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, listen, support your artists, okay? We all love our friends, but you just can't get a free pass when they're doing a one man show. You got to get in there. You got to spend the, how much is it, the ticket? It's $10. $10. 10 bucks to see me? Exactly. Give up your mother truck and Starbucks for a week. Come uh, on. Literally. Okay? We got this. All right, guys. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to get set up for Sarah Withers. We're all excited. And we'll be right back, guys. Hang tight. Hi, guys. Welcome back. We've got Sarah with us. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you so much. Sarah is an actress. She's a hustler. She makes it happen like we do. And we're <laughs> stoked to have her here. <gasps> Thank um, you. So you've got a new movie. Yeah. It came out in June. It did. We've got Nightmare Cinema, mm -hmm. which... It's a trilogy. It's a it's an anthology. Anthology. Okay. Yes. Okay. So okay. it has it has five short films five. within the film. Um, so there's five different directors. So there's a little taste of everything. Yeah. Yeah. And you're in one of the five. Exactly. And the one that you're in is a thing in the woods. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so here's what I love to ask people who do horror. Okay. How do you feel about scary movies in your personal life? 
Do you partake of them? Do you not partake mm. of them? Well, as of late, I am a partaker. Okay. <laughs> okay. Love that. Um, Love that. I was not before doing this film, okay. but um, since then, I thought, well, this is a little pathetic. I must get my feet wet. Okay. I must. And now that I sort of see how they're made, yeah, it's so much easier to detach okay. myself from it emotionally. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I just tell myself, you know. That's not real. That's not real. I mean, honestly, what scares me more, I was just talking about those supernatural stories from people in yeah. real life. Yeah. That's what I don't mess with. Right. I'm, right. I yeah. don't want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't happen. Right. <laughs> Sorry you had that experience, but I don't know. <laughs> See, uh, it's I'm not real. I'm one of those who just, <laughs> I, I can't watch for because I get scared. I'm emotionally invested in everything, yeah. mm -hmm. and yeah. I will dream about it. I will see it if I go get water in the middle of the night. I yes. will know that yep. it is killing me. I just, <laughs> I cannot do it. And I've always wondered, okay, if I was to do a horror film, would it be easier for me to then watch horror films? I mean, granted, there's a great, yes. you know, you've got the bloody yes. horror, you've got the supernatural horror, there's yes. a wide variety of horror. Yeah. But, I, like, I won't go to Hollywood Horror Nights. I won't do it. Um, I've never been either. I can't, I'm like, my friend's like, no, you'll be fine. I'm like, you don't. I will cry. Are you ready to carry me through while I'm sobbing? Like, that's what will right. happen to me. Because your whole, you just feel it in your whole body. Yeah. It's this adrenaline rush, and you feel physically threatened. And so, yeah, I've, I've cried before, too, in situations yeah. like that. Horror festival, or, you know, like, haunted yeah. houses, that yeah. type of thing. I'm like, this isn't fun. I'm crying. Right. This isn't yeah. like, This is not. <laughs> yeah. I was just at a Halloween party where, like, a guy came, and he just got done working at whatever, um... Uh, Six Flags version of the yeah, Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood. Yeah, okay, yeah. so he just got to work and he came in his full yeah. outfit and he had on these like giant, I mean, he was like seven feet tall and he wow. was terrifying to look at. It was, everyone else was relatively, you know, and they're in the costume, but I really had to struggle to be like, it's a man in a costume, just don't make eye contact with him, don't, don't go him. near him, <laughs> steer clear, it's fine. Yeah. It's so, I don't know yes. why. It's Avoiding so eye contact is a really good tactic. I have gone through haunted yeah. houses with my face like buried in my father's arm. Yeah. Like singing songs that make me feel better. And my sister's yeah. like, you're ruining it. And I'm like, this is why I shouldn't go into haunted houses. No, I, I do the same thing. When I'm scared, I start singing songs like, everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> yes. Whatever you gotta do, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. when you're on set experiencing it, because you, I mean, you get pretty fucked up, girl. You're covered in blood. You, you're like laying on a dead something at some point, a corpse of some sort. Yeah. How did yeah. that go for you? Well, it actually kind of hurt. Um, yeah. Because, so, you know, we're in the forest. Yeah. And so it's on the ground, this dead body, and there's all these intestines, fake blood, uh. Uh, glycerin to make it slimy yeah. and nasty. Amazing. So the, the joke is that I, I am running away from the welder, the, the bad guy, and yeah. I fall onto this body, and I can't get up because I'm slipping Swimming around in, in the guts. guts. Yes. Um, and I had a few scratches because, like, you know, I mean. Yeah, you went for it, sister. I, I, was, I was struggling, and uh, <laughs> there were so many little pine needles and stuff, but uh, it was it was fun. It was fun. It was a lot more fun to watch than yeah, uh, yeah, than it do. was to do. But I I did enjoy. It's kind of one of those things like those those satisfying videos where you watch stuff getting destroyed, like like makeup or whatever. It was kind of yeah. the same thing of just watching my whole outfit get just like yeah. demolished and all gross. Like it's kind of fun. Like okay, that. and you really, that, yeah, you really notice like the humor of it. You're like this. I'm not taking myself seri like this seriously at all <laughs> if I'm watching it. You know, right, like because right. I know how it's made. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, take, it took a lot of uh, so much talent that I didn't. I never thought about what it took to make a realistic looking mm -hmm. corpse, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. realistic intestines. Like you have to go all out. So m many kudos. Who and do speaking that. of humor, I mean, there's supposed to be some humor within these films, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. So, um, A Thing in the Woods is like an homage to 80 slasher films. Okay. So, it plays on all the tropes. Um, it really gets in there with a bunch of just, uh, yeah, we lean into all the, to the, all the jokes. So, I, I recommend, especially if you're a horror fan from that time, Friday yeah. the 13th, you know, all those films. It's gonna. Now, the horror community, I love to talk about the horror community because they are such a community. And, yeah, and, and yeah. if you've starred in a horror film, I mean, I kind of want to be in one just so I can, like, get on the good side of the horror community. <laughs> they love you for life. Yeah. And has this film been well received by the horror community? It really has. Um, I was so I was so happy. It, it's done super well. It's certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Hey. hey. Um, and yeah, 
Yeah, so people have been really sweet. They've reached out, asked me to sign their copy. So I'm like, oh, thank you. That's I'm so honored. Yeah, so it's been it's been really fun. People really liked it. I think because of the nostalgia of this film mm -hmm. as well. And then, you know, you have directors like Joe Dante, who did Gremlins, mm. who directed one of them. Mick Garris right. did Masters of Horror. So um, there's a lot of directors in there that are really well known to horror fans. So mm -hmm. it was fun little... It was just a really fun project. And then have you noticed since doing horror that now the horror doors have opened up to you? People are like, yeah, come and be in this horror film and this horror film. Well, because you, you should say mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, a couple days ago, I got cast in another horror film. Woo! Woo! Yay! Thank you, thank you. Um, and it's also going to be very brutal. <laughs> oh, God, oh, no! <laughs> um, but it's called Caps Crossing the Wrong Side of Dead. So, wow. yeah. Apparently there's a right side and you're on the wrong. Yeah, I'm on the wrong side. Yeah, on the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we filmed that in a couple of weeks. Okay. So, I'm getting ready. Are you filming locally? You going somewhere? Uh, we're filming in Northern California, which is great because I'm oh, from there. Good. So, I'm going to be able to visit my family uh, after we, we shoot. So, I'm really excited. Yeah. Now, you're down here now, right? Because yeah. like, were, were you yeah. doing like a commute situation there for a minute or not? Well, yeah, I mean, I. I grew up in the Bay Area, and so I started acting like when I was eight. So uh, I would I would come down to LA, but I went to USC. So ever since going to USC, yeah. I've just sort of stayed here. So yeah. I graduated uh, about over a year ago. So I've just LA is my home now, and yeah. And really, honestly, for for someone who graduated a year ago and you're already in a feature film, I mean, oh, that's fucking well, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So Absolutely. Much. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so what? Um, what kind of genre do you want to dip your toe into that's not horror? Mm. Do you like to tap into like your dramatic side? You want more comedy in your life? I really would love to do more comedy. Um, I am a huge fan. I love stand up. Um, I don't know if stand up's the route I would want to go, but I want to do some. I comedic love stand up shows. too, and yeah. I, I I weirdly had a dream for about five years to do really? stand up. And I've got all these fucking notes written down, yeah. and I'm like, I just need to get my shit together. And try. You guys need yeah. to do it. We need more women in comedy. That's so okay. true. Please. Yes. That's yes. so true. No, you're right. We do. Like, we, we do. need more women in we comedy. Need more women in comedy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm a huge. Eliza Schlesinger is oh, so she's good. Oh, I love her. She's amazing. She's so fun and goofy. Like, I feel she she is somebody that I would want to emulate. See, growing up, I loved Chelsea Handler. Mm -hmm. I did too. Yeah. I did too. Yeah. And, and she even had her own Netflix show, right. everything. But right. I'm kind of Chelsea Handlered out. Like, I need a fresh face. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, agree. Samantha Bee is great, and she's got the political and the comedic side that all locked down. So. Mm -hmm. But you're right. There's not. A, there's just not enough women in comedy. No. Yeah. Or in yeah. late night television, for that matter. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So. I would love to do more, like, uh, I, I'm a huge fan of Silicon Valley. I really love mm. that humor. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of, although I feel like I'm pretty expressive so I yeah. need to sort of hone it down because uh, so much of really masterful comedy I feel like is super subtle but I've seen you know? both I've seen people who are it's super true. subtle and then there are those who like they own that and they just act it out and they're in there gesticulating and people are on the floor dying Jim Carrey yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's it. awesome you can, you can do both well, there you go. I, I love it I can see it I can see it <laughs> oh thanks guys yeah. awesome loving mm -hmm. the support right now mm -hmm. yeah I can't wait to see you too Thank we're you. Gonna get gonna, out there. All right, we should challenge it. each other to. We gotta challenge each other to do we'll it. We'll do it. Okay, we'll do it. or we'll do it. <laughs> um, and then you also do a little mindful meditation, which yes, is something I've yes. been trying to implement into my life since summertime. Mm. And I do find that like, there's like a book that I've been reading so entirely slow and t like purposefully because I'll mm. go back and read yeah. it, and I kind of use it as like to help facilitate meditation. And I do find that it's really helpful. Like, so like, tell us your experience about mindful meditation. Uh, okay, well, I didn't want to do it for so Me long. Me too! <laughs> I did not want to do it. I was so resistant. I was like, fuck this. Yeah, Is it really so gonna help boring, me? right? Yes. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna sit there. All right, so for a long time, I was like, no, 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 I'm not gonna do it. But then I got to a point where I was like, wow, I'm making myself really unhappy, and I recognize that I have a lot of habitual behaviors that aren't serving me whatsoever. Right, right. I have to stop. Um, and a lot of it was just the, the thoughts I was having and the sort of rabbit holes I would go down yes. of negative thinking. Yes. Um, and so once I started, I, was, I got to a point where I was so unhappy. I was like, I have to do this. I'm really committed. And it really changed my life. And I experienced 
actual freedom from caring about what other people thought mm. and from just really just being able to enjoy this moment and not be so anxious about the future yeah. or, mm. you know, bitter about the past. Right. <laughs> right. Like, I was like, right. let's yeah. let that shit go. Right. Um, so it's, it's, it can be hard. It's, they call it the discipline for a reason mm -hmm. um, because you really have to will yourself to yeah. do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I, I love it and I really recommend too doing classes, if, uh, especially if it's hard to do on your own because sometimes for me it's like, I just, I need to have sort of a communal energy, yeah. and that yeah. helps a lot. Yeah. Um, there's some great places in LA, inside LA, Den Meditation Center, um, so yes, I, I love those places. I volunteered for a while at Meditation Center as you get free classes oh, a lot of times. Fun. Yeah, um, but I also use the Calm app. I'm doing on my little oh, blog. I, I oh, I have, the I have that. Yeah. Yeah. I have that. I love like the music, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. puts you on a good route. I personally, I'm a little off with mindful meditation because I had a boss that used to force me to take <gasps> meditation. Mm, weird. And that inside the class, this guy would always fall asleep. <laughs> so I would try meditating and I would just hear his snores for an hour. Oh my wow. God. And I was like, no, I'm going to mindful meditate on my own. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you got to find a good place in LA. That was back in New York. So maybe the LA, yeah, the LA so crowd's probably asleep. better. Yeah. It is easy. Yeah, yeah, it's just gotta make sure you're not laying down when you do it. Oh no, that's, exactly. you cannot lay down. No. It's, you're done for. You can convince yourself, oh, it's more comfortable this way. No. It'll be easier. You're no. gone. You're done. So, no yeah. laying down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so what do we need to be on the lookout that's upcoming for Sarah? Um, This new horror film. Okay, okay. For one. And uh, just, just, just look out for me. Just look out, Keep your guys. eyes out. She's gonna be everywhere. Look out on the horizon. That's where I'll be. Yes. And then, um, <laughs> and the best place to probably look out for you would be Instagram. I'm guessing. Yeah. 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 So where can people yeah, find, follow, know. and support yes, you? Yes. Let me follow you guys. Um, my Insta is at Sarah E Withers. So Sarah with an H, got the E in there, and then Withers, like uh, the horse's shoulders. That's what I. Perfect. Tell oh, yeah. Okay. Although I think Get it's spelled up. differently. It's like W I T H E R S. That's how you spell my last name. Okay, yes. Yeah, so go with yeah, that, guys. W I T H E R S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then when your next horror film comes out, you're more than welcome to come back and promote it if you feel Thank like you, you so would much. like to. Of course. We'd love to have you. Of course. I love being here. You guys are awesome. We're just, you know, we just roll with it. We just, whatever happens, happens. Happen. <laughs> yeah. You guys, yeah. we're going to take a really quick break. We're going to all set up for our musical guest, who I'm so stoked about and is a real effing treat. Um, hang tight, everyone, and we'll be right back in a gym. Hi guys, welcome back. We're rounding out the show with Kelsey. Welcome to the show, girl. Thank you for having me. Is Kelsey is like an all-in-one everything. Okay, <laughs> she's musical theater, she sings, she performs, yes. she rules the world. All right, so I'm just gonna like geek out for a second. So you are also in Off the Strip WeHo yes. with Robbie Dean, who was with us last week. Robbie we Dean. Love us Robbie Dean. And you were definitely one of the most riveting performers to watch. I mean, Kelsey is like, she should have That's her own one-woman really nice. show. Seriously. I mean, she like acts it out. She gets in there. She's got flair and I'm pizzazz. And none of it comes off cheesy. It's like everything you need in the best way. Mm. And honestly, after Robbie and Maxie, because those were my guys, oh, hell yeah. it was all you, sister. Oh. It was all you. That's an honor. So Please. you were truly a joy to watch. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. No, I mean, Robbie, Maxie, all the people that were at the cast, the contestants of, of that show, I I could not believe every single week, I could not believe I was there. Could yeah. not believe I was in their presence. I was just constantly bowing to them like Beyonce. It was just, I felt really grateful, so. And also, you're kind of a little bit of a pageant queen. Yeah. I am. And Miss I, Oklahoma 2013. Uh, I love wow. it though. And, and like the, this is the truth of it all. Tell us the truth. It is, number one, it is one of the greatest honors of my whole life to have been Miss Oklahoma, to have gone to Miss America. Uh, to, Miss America runner up. Hello. Wow. That's pretty Woo. much Miss America. I mean, it was, it, I mean, I will tell you this. I was very young. I was 20 years old when all of that went down. It was, it was the most life changing thing for the good and the bad. I bet. And, and it made me who I was as a person. And now living in this city, I mean, coming from a state like Oklahoma where you're a big fish in a small pond, yes. 
I, I feel really, I'm, I'm, you might feel the same way, I don't know where you both are originally from, but coming to Los Angeles and being able to establish, establish yourself as a person here, I needed that huge experience yeah. to really gauge what my persona was in this city. So right. uh, all to say, so grateful for that too. It is a bit weird that it happened. And like, sometimes I'm like, that's just not who I am. <laughs> I'm so weird. I'm like a goblin. Like, I have, like, tentacles, and I live under a bridge. So, like, that, being a pageant girl doesn't match my, right. who I am. Right. But those girls are the best. They're the best. Don't judge them. Don't judge pageant I'm girls. I'm not judging them. You, de- you never know Listen, what you get. Listen, they don't no have to rock Vaseline on their teeth, and I'm pretty Hell sure yeah. I fail that. So. Duct tape yeah. on the boobies. There's hey, a lot going there's on. There's a lot yes. going on. Oh my I've seen Miss Congeniality, like, so many times. I have <laughs> so much respect for pageant queens. Mm-hmm. You have no idea. I was actually talking to somebody the other day about the makeover sequence mm. of like the waxing and the the yeah. pulling mm. and the this and that that's exactly what happened I was to me say, that's accurate it, a- absolutely accurate and it's as painful and also riveting you get both wow. feelings yeah it's fun how many of your pageant dresses do you still own i have every single one this I is have wow. it, every single one i still try it my goal is to always be able to fit in them I love that. not always true can't do <laughs> it okay Okay. Some some ladies get some hips when we Listen, get. Listen, we know, love our hips. I love my okay? hips. Okay, I've gotten hips love and them. I fucking love them. I'm not getting rid of them, but no, I will I hope shimmy and bigger. Them. Yeah. Go oh for yeah. It. Like let me just, just bigger. like knock into me when I'm walking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I I love those dresses because of how outrageous they are, and it makes me feel like I'm on RuPaul's Drag Race. Well, uh. because you kind of wore some of them in Off the Strip, and I was like. Oh, yeah. Where is this woman getting these clothes? Yeah, mm-hmm. For sure. If you want to but borrow them. But you owned the hell out of them. Thanks. I, I liked. Yeah. I liked. It was great. <laughs> I like where it is. It was great. Also, <laughs> Hollywood Fringe Fest this past summer. Yeah. We had a show. It sold out. Yeah, it's sold out every my single show. Every wow. single show it sold out, which was nuts. I mean, granted, that has a lot to do with the producers and the writer and the director of that show, which is Rachel Scott, mm-hmm. Sam Herring, Cassidy Cook, all of those. That group of people really like made that show I just happened to have a very unique voice that added I not to brag but I, it added a, a little care. bit of a punch to yeah. the show so I'm a bit you know my strange goblin like qualities mm-hmm, mm-hmm. really attribute to a performance that's entertaining for everyone I love that and is anything else going to happen with sorry about your friend do we think Maybe? I cannot we say okay oh, then guys secret, you secret, know secrets. yeah you know you know what that means, though, in Hollywood talk. You know what that means. <laughs> also, going with your goblin-like qualities, mm-hmm. uh, you enjoy beekeeping. I do. It's like a thing that I... I okay, I'll tell you the whole thing tell about me. that so yeah. that you don't get it misconstrued. Okay, please. I am not, like, the best beekeeper in the world or, like, professional I mean, in any way. I imagine way. it's hard. Yeah, it's, it, and also it's... Namely, the whole reason I did it was because my entire life I've always just tried to overcome my fears. Love that. I'm terrified of bees. I'm terrified of wasps. Mm-hmm. Anything that flies around and stings, mm. like, you can just screw off. But, like, I, I'm i also a plant-based eater. Okay. And I love the environment. And I love the world. Yeah. Like, our planet. I want to take care of it. And bees mm-hmm. are... We need those guys. We need yeah. them yeah. so bad. Like, really? honestly, like, we will be eating out of plastic tubes and not real food if we don't have our bees. So I started getting into that as, like, a hobby to give back. Um, I did it long enough to where I, I still have the ability, I still have the, the knowledge from it, but it's, it's horrifying. It's so scary, I can't even explain. See, I have a fear, well, it started out with a fear of sharks. Okay. And then it kind of spiraled into not being able to see into water, like yep. water that I can't see uh, into, I don't yeah. want to go into. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And there's this, you. the best virtual reality experience I've ever had over here at the fancy mall, mm-hmm. Westfield, whatever it's mm-hmm. called. They have a great virtual reality experience, three different adventures, and it is like you are there. Yes, yes, yes. And one mm. of them is an underwater one. Oh, geez. And part of me wants to, like, do it, but the other part of me is afraid I will cry. You know, I think that there is, I believe in, uh, I'm a huge believer in spiritual growth, like yeah. always chasing your growth. Because, yeah. like, we, we don't want to leave the planet the same way that we came into it as, like, an infant that. baby with no, with no knowledge. Absolutely. And the more that we can push ourselves into a place where we're fear, it's fear-based in our minds, but if we overcome it, we come out of it alive. Yeah. 
there's growth in that. I totally agree. That's why, I mean, I, I'm with you with the sharks. Honestly, I can't even think about sharks. I know, I'm like, could I go into a cage in the ocean? I just, I, I can't, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I can't even go on a boat in the ocean. Uh, wow. Well. I can't, I can't do it. I mean, I honestly, if there's a bee around, like, if it were to fly in, you would see me respond yeah. in a way that, like, that's not how a beekeeper responds to bees, <laughs> but, like, I just can't. Have yeah. you gotten stung a lot? I, crazy, have never been stung by a bee in my life. I got wow. stung by a swarm of yellow jackets oh. on a on a hike on Fryman Canyon, and it was life changing in a, in a oh, very bad no. way. Shit. Yeah, I mean, and I was also I was filming crazy story. I was filming a TV show that I filmed a long time ago, and you probably have heard American Crime Story: The People vs. Yes, OJ. and you did mm. a lot in there. I was I was girl. in you I was in regular. that show. I was in that show, and so I but I got stung the day before one of our well, but the day before I had to be on set, and oh. I had to sit in the courtroom for 16 hours that day and I had welts all over my body. My makeup artist, Kelsey, who was absolutely amazing, she did what she could to like cover it up in a way that was like comfortable for me, but oh my God, you can't imagine. <laughs> you cannot imagine that. That experience was the weirdest thing. I was like, I am covered in stings. It was intense. It was very intense. And you know what? You overcame it and you persevered. And now we're alive. We're, we're, in, the, mm -hmm. we're in the middle of the grove in LA, yes, we we're are. living. It's, it's all about cocktail. growth. It's about growth. It's about yes. empowering yourself yes. to be better. Yeah. Okay, so what is coming up in the near or far future that we need to know about Kelsey? Gosh, a lot. And I'm trying to think about what I'm allowed to say. Okay. I have, there's some projects in development. I, there is a film coming out. Love that. Nice. And I don't know what I'm allowed to say, so I can't She's say anything. She's got a film coming out, guys. Film's coming She's out, though, and it's out. coming to theaters, and we're not sure when, but if you check me out on Instagram, you will see the, the trailer, and Ooh. you'll, like, once we get all that material, you'll know exactly what all of that is. And tell everyone your Instagram. Yeah, what is your My Insta? Instagram is Kelsey, K-E-L-S-E-Y, underscore Griswold, G-R-I-S-W-O-L-D, and that's it. Kelsey Wonderful. So even though I know for a fact we could talk <laughs> for, like, ten more hours easily, <laughs> sadly... <laughs> Not sadly, but yes, we have to have you perform okay. and continue on our merry way. Um, is there anything you'd like to tell us about this little performance? Um, you know, I, I came here with a bunch of ideas, yep. and I think the, the best song for this particular environment is Your Song by Elton John, okay. and it's my favorite song. My mother sang it to me as a kid. Aww, I love that song. Love that song. My whole song. With my whole life. So. Okay, girl. All right. It's all you. All right, here we go. It's a little bit funny, this feeling inside. I'm not one of those who can easily hide. I don't have much money, but boy, if I did, I'd buy a big house where we both could live. If I was a sculptor, but then again, no, or a man who makes potions in the traveling show. I know it's not much, but it's the best I can do. My gift is my song, yeah. this one's for you. And you can tell everybody this is your song. It may be quite simple, but now that it's done, I hope you don't mind, I hope you don't mind that I put down in words how wonderful life is now you're in the world. I hope you don't mind, I hope you don't mind that I put down in words How wonderful life is Now you're in the world Oh, you have wow. such a beautiful voice! Wow. Thank you Amazing. for sharing that with us. Thank you for letting me. Yes, that was amazing. It's so fun to just sing. I love ah. it. And if you can't sing, sing anyway. Sing anyway. Hear that? Sing 
anyways, guys. Yeah. Guys, if you love Kelsey as much as we do, please find, follow, and support her. She appreciates that. We appreciate that. Um, thank you to Mixology for letting us be here, of course. Ooh. We love you guys. Karen over there at Spa Girls Cocktails, always giving us the yummy oh. alcohol. Thank, thank you, Karen. You. Thank you, girl. Uh, we'll be here next week. And we will see everyone then, guys. Go kick, go kick ass this week. Yes. Please do that. Woo. All right, bye, guys. Have a great week.